That weapon's a vertical 20 kilo spinning disc, but they have other problems, exposed wheels, light armour, and the fist could be a little limp-wristed. From Hale in Cheshire, Crush Stacia. Ah, oh, the Visser family are back. They reached their heat final last time, got beaten there. Crush Station, you got new T-shirts, they're very nice. Let's have a little, little look at those. We like, we like the design, it looks yeah. very good. But you haven't done much to the robots. Well, we had done a lot of the robots. Because of the early wars this year, we had to revert to the original one. Yeah, you see, so. what, what they did do was put lots of hydraulics yeah, in, didn't you? Yeah. Because somebody said that that was easy. Yeah, guess George. who? And um, then you found yeah. it wasn't as easy and straightforward as you thought, so you took them all back out again. <laughs> so we now have the robot that we had before. Yeah. Are you with us? But it will work. Tough to crack, the shell 12mm, thick aerospace aluminium, the two claws capable of a 300 kilo pressure grab, but the aerial's just between the eyes and that could leave this crab scuffling sideways. From Chertsey in Surrey, Danto Mackay. If you'd ask me for a favourite for this four-way melee, this would be the one. Now, what, how, do you, how do you pronounce it? Dan Tom Pete. Dan Tom Pete. Daniel Thomas Kira, my three children. Ah, uh, now we have it explained. Now you have a range of weaponry here, which I want you to talk me through. Okay. First, we have a high pressure flipper. Right. Closed, fully open. Yeah. Less than twenty fifth of a second. Yeah. <laughs> Two tons of force at this point here. We have some chisel spikes at the front. So you can flip the likes of Dr. Fist. Oh, yes. And Crush Station? So you might be able to... Yeah? Yeah. Oh. Dr. Fist's wheels are coming off and Crush Station's going out. Anything else that we need to know about? It's a full-body spinner. It's a full-body spinner? Yeah. The tail goes down, the nose comes up, and it spins. You lucky, kilo. lucky people. This is going to be a battle to remember. Good design and construction, fast, agile, reliable, hard-hitting, good, interesting robot with a full-pressure flipper. But new boys... And nervous, believe it or not. Roboteers, stand by. In the polls together, on the left, Crustacean, with Ian and Dominic Visser. On the right, Dan Tonkier, the captain, Michael Lambert. And there, on the left, Mr Nasty, Perry Watkins driving, and Paul Clark driving for Dr Fist. In the arena for the house robots, Sir Killalot. And the mighty Sergeant Bash. Three, two... So don't forget, I've tipped damn Tom Kier for this, which means it'll probably go out in the first few seconds. Their crustacean scuffles along the side of the arena. Intriguing technique for crustacean. Dominic Visser might get a shot of him in a couple of seconds. Time is at the controls. There, when he closes those gloves, so the pincers on crustacean close, like a crab's claws. Mr Nasty seems to... Have got problems. Crustacean also as Dan Tom here comes in underneath that ground clearance of four centimeters. It is an Achilles heel for Crustacean. Mr. Nasty is in all sorts of trouble out there. The report is having a look there, center of the arena, and Crustacean is also with its problems in the CPZ. They need to get out of there. If they're in the CPZ too long, of course, house robots like Sir Killalot can come in. Meanwhile, Dan Tonki has another go at Mr Nasty, who I'm sure by now has been technically immobilised. Crustacean is in the CPZ. Dr Fist, we have seen very little of throughout this competition. There's Dan Tonki coming in again. I thought it would be a good machine. Poor Mr Nasty. I think very, very early on, the 436 volt, 750 watt motors went. Crustacean is about to go as well, perhaps out of the arena, so Killalot has it in his merciless grip. The ref bot just looks on there. The clock is not yet ticking down. Crustacean is OK, it seems to me. No, I don't think Mr Nasty is. Surely they've gone, and my big question is, where is Dr Fist? There is Dr Fist on the arena side wall. Now, when would they immobilise? Crustacean has been flipped up. Is there still movement? There is from the pincer. This could be very vital here. Dan Tonkier is certainly the most effective, dominant, agile, destructive machine in this particular four-way melee. Crustacean, should it go to a judge's decision, has worked hard. Dr Fist has done absolutely nothing and is on the arena side wall. And Mr Nasty, for me, was immobilised a long while ago. And now, finally, the ref bot comes in to count down Dr Fist. They didn't make much of a fist of it at all, did they? We thought they were lip-wristed, and indeed they were, boys. And Dan Tomkia has a final thrust at 
crustacean. The pit release button has been activated. That's the siren you can hear. You can see the pit going down. The ref bot is counting out Mr. Nasty, I believe. Dr. Fist has already gone. Dan Tonki is shuffling around, doing as much damage as it can do for later on. And very impressive, too. There's Dr. Fist. About to be pitted by Zakinalop. Now, almost bending forward and leaning over Zakinalop. Trying to clutch up the 98 kilos of Dr. Fist. Pitted or put it onto the floor, flipper, or into the drop zone. A new feature in Robot Wars 6. Basically, a huge weight suspended above the arena, about to drop and cause pain and strain. And that is what's happened to our losing competitors in this four way melee. Dr. Fist nearest us, Mr. Nasty also. They're out, Dan Tonkier, a crustacean through. Good night. Well, well, well. Dr. Fist and Mr. Nasty immobilised and pitted. Dan Tomkier and Crustacean, they live to fight another day. Oh dear, dear, dear. It was a pit fest at the end, wasn't it? Yeah, I believe we lost it. But, probably... but sadly, you were in the pit. Uh, well, it's bad uh, luck, I guess, from the beginning. It's bad reliability, probably. But okay. next, next year will be much better. You're going to go home and beat up your robot? I am. OK. I, am. I wish we could film that. <laughs> Thanks very much for taking part. Thank you. See Bye. you next year, probably. Now, you call it pure evil in a box. Well, we did, yeah. But I missed the evil bit. Yes. <laughs> well, we didn't really get much of a chance to be very evil. No, it was murder on the robot floor. Yeah. And um, you were on the receiving end, sadly. What happened? Talk me through it. Well, we just we started, we ran away quickly and hid in the corner, ready to get a run-up, because we <laughs> knew that uh, Dan Tomkin was going to come straight after us, yes. as he told us so. <laughs> and uh, we rammed straight in there, and uh, that nasty crab got hold of us and chopped our aerial off. Yes. And that was the end of it? That was the end There's of that, always yeah. an Achilles heel. Lost our where, where was the aerial? The aerial was uh, around the back. There we are. So there's hardly any damage, really. It's just... The aerial was. Look, out from one there. aerial sticking out of one hole, and that's the end of it for you. Murder on the robot floor. Sounds like a great name for a record. Out go Mr Nasty and Dr Fist. Congratulations, Dan, Tom, Keir and Cross Station. And cracking second round fights coming up in a moment. Dan Tom Key against Mighty Mouse, but first up, Chaos 2, the Mighty against Crustacean. OK, so you'd suffer damage in round one. Yeah, just a little electrical problem. It's all sorted now. OK, you're going to be up against Crustacean. I can never say it. Crustacean. The crab. Yeah, whatever. In the, <laughs> in the next round, how do you feel about that? Um... Quietly confident, George would agree to say, but uh, it does run both ways up, so that could be a problem for us. Yeah, it's going to be difficult to flip, but is your flipper in proper working order now? Oh, yeah. OK, good. So we can look through for some spectacular shellfish flipping. That is, if the spectacular shellfish is in a mood to work. Um, i still smiling. Because it's in bits. It's in lots of bits. I know you never stop smiling, bless your heart, but what's happened? We burnt out a motor, one of the drive motors. I don't know how, but anyway. You hadn't realised that at the time, no. had you? And so we only discovered that very late, and now there's not much time left to sort it out. And surely so it would be a good idea just to replace the motor. That would be good if I brought this there. It was a bit of a rush trying to get here before <laughs> nine o'clock, and then we waited. Okay, wait, so what happens? You're a motor down. What happens? So we lose a claw because all the motors are the same. So not quite as nice. You'll have to just put one behind his back and just do it that way. <laughs> do you think you'd be all right? Uh, no. <laughs> You've got grease on your nose. You're up against chaos too. It's not good, is it? No. Oh, for you. Ciao. Four robots survive the melees, but how will they cope going head to head? Hey, bring on round two! Chaos 2. Twice UK champions. George Francis up there on the left hand side with Ian Swan on the right, little Richard in the middle. Richard Swan, 12 years of age. Crush Stacian. Station team, father and son, Ian Visser and eight-year-old Dominic. 
Superteers, stand by. In the arena for the house room, Sir Killer Lords with that deadly blinking eye. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Mr. Psycho's in there as well with the heavy hammer. Three, two, one. Message here, don't mix it with the house robots. Chaos 2 immediately on the attack on Crush Station. Well, they were having an argument and a Barney and a bit of a rant and a rage about the claws. Ian Visser, good rant to claws. Rant to claws! Rant to claws! That's good. Well, maybe not. Crush Station being dragged across the arena floor by Chaos 2. Oh, Chaos is on his side! This really would be a turn-up for the book because Crush Station is not fighting in its full capability. We know that. And look at Chaos 2, twice UK champion on its side. Using the flipper to self-right. The inbuilt 3 mechs self-riding mechanism. 